we're at it again on 8.8 .8. i'm gonna get this thing ready for uh for prep and welding or i'm gonna prep it for welding first thing we gotta do is clear a bunch of stuff off of it so i've already done some of the work as you can see this weird bracket that sits right here i took that out that was three bolts they were i think they were size 14 no they were size 13 uh, screws and you can see the nuts are, are welded onto it. So just take the bolts out uh, Next we need to take the brakes off. So I've loosened the bolt, bolts holding the brakes on so we'll take those out Take the calipers off Realistically, I just want room for when I start grinding this weld. Otherwise, I wouldn't even really worry about it um, Of course, there we go I'll get that off. Got these off over here. Got these off over here. Let's see how that will just pop off there. Uh, I'm gonna have to get a screwdriver in there and pry that back a little bit. Uh, take this bolt out to take the uh, lines loose. That that line was already loose on that side. I need to take this one loose. I think that's the 11. I'll just back that out. I'll get that line out of the way. Uh, this is, I think, the APS tone ring sensor. Uh, so you want to take that off. The reason is because the way this is going to have to work with the uh, sway bar for the rear of the Jeep, I need to cut these two fins off. Now, I haven't researched how exactly this is going to work, but I do know I'm obviously going to have to plate this off. Uh, just get a little piece of metal. It's already got one screw hole right there. Put some silicone around it or something. I'll figure it out. Weld it. Probably just put some tack welds on it. That should be it. Then I'll start cutting. So I'll, I'll be back in a second when I start cutting. And I'll go ahead and give you a little uh, preview. What you do on these axles, on basically any axle, you don't want to cut into the tube if you can help it. But what you do is you take your grinder, your cutting wheel, and I wouldn't use a, a, a plasma or anything like that, uh, or even a torch for that matter. Just use a cutoff wheel. It's the cheapest, quickest, and uh, most effective way. You just cut into these welds. Uh, as far as you can without getting into the tube and then once you get them basically um, cut you just take a big ballot and just hit them and they'll break off you can see there's no weld on the inside of most of these so realistically all you got to do is cut that outside weld once we get all the brackets taken off which there's one two three four five six brackets on here once we get those off, we'll take a, a flap disc or, or a, a, a sanding wheel and we will get all the paint off uh, because we want to be able to have a very prep surface to weld to and we also want to be able to have a nice prep surface when we repaint it after we weld it. Because you want to paint everything. I don't live in the north so I don't have a lot of salt or rust issues but you still want everything painted after it gets done. So I'm not going to film all that because that's pretty boring. Uh, the only other thing I might do because obviously this backing plate still going to be in the way as I may take these four bolts out off and get the backing plate off uh, but I really don't want to have to take the axles out and there's no need in taking the axles out for what I'm doing so I really don't want to because I just I don't want to deal with that today so if I if I can't then I, then I will take these four bolts out and take all this backing plate and this dust shield and everything off in order to get to right here but i think i can probably get to that without doing that i say that and then you know what's going to happen i'm going to have to take all that off but let's see i still have one two three four i still have four other brackets i can take off um prior to doing that uh, i'll be back in a minute after i get some stuff cutting and uh and give you all an update all right guys i'm about i don't know a couple hours in hour and a half into it and i've got most of the brackets off uh once again you just use a cutoff wheel uh, however, I did go through two cutoff wheels more than I thought I would. Uh, maybe I just need better cutoff wheels. <clears throat> I still only have, I guess, whatever shock mounts left to do. I almost got that one off, but uh, I didn't want to take those backing plates off. And I was able to bend that one down. I'll be able to get to it with a long, with, with a normal size cutoff wheel. So I'm going to do the same thing on this one. So I don't have to take those backing plates off. I've got most of the axle tube prepped. Uh, I just use a flap disc for that. If you've never used a flap disc, they are fantastic for taking paint off of metal. As you can see, possibly from the ground, I did not drain the fluid, which was a mistake because you saw me take the speed sensor or the ABS sensor out 
and I didn't realize that I still had it out, not plugged back up. And when I turned the axle over to get to one of the brackets, all the oil went out all over my driveway. So I used some cat litter, got most of it up. Once I got all this out of the way, I just have to pressure wash it. Just go ahead and drain it. That's the best, best way to avoid that because that sucks. But I'll still get cleaned up anyway. You can see how the, what the flap disc did. It gets it nice and smooth and shiny. It looks still got a little bit to get off of here and here. I didn't, I'm not obviously done. Um, still got to get all this stuff off to get the flap disc off. But this will be ready once I do that for welding. I'm, I'm going to tack weld these tubes in or put a few beads on this on these tubes because they're only pressed in. They've been on the spin. I still got to grind these little tabs off. I may not grind them off. I may because I, I still got to reroute new uh, brake lines. I may and those are neat little brake line holders. So I may not grind those off. One tip, guys, when you're I'm, I'm going to put this back in my garage now. But one thing you should do. Um, even though it's going to be in my garage and, and I'm not in a, a salty climate or anything like that, I'm still going to spray it down with some, uh, with some WD-40 or, or some sort of uh, rust inhibitor. I'm just going to use a rubber glove to kind of rub it on there because I may not uh, work on it again for another week or so. And you just don't want any chance of any rust popping up. Now, obviously, it would just be surface rust. I can knock it right back off. But that's just more work that doesn't need to be uh, done. So I'm going to go get some WD-40. I'm going to spray these down. I'm going to wipe them down. I'm going to roll this back in the garage, put all the tools up, and I'm done for the day. Uh, now you've seen kind of what I mean by clearing the axle off and getting the brackets off. Uh, let's look at the bracket kit. But before we do that, I do want to talk about one quick thing. When I was talking about using a cutoff wheel, I was talking about a four and a half inch grinder or a four inch grinder and just a thin cutoff wheel, uh, not, not a grinding wheel or, or anything like that. And you can use obviously a bigger cutoff. You could use a small cutoff wheel. On, a, on an air grinder, a die grinder, something like that. But, uh, but I just used a four and a half inch Black & Decker, I think it is, or you know, something like that, <clears throat> grinder, and just put a four and a half inch cutoff wheel on it. So that's what I mean by cutoff wheel, to, to cut the welds on those brackets. But now that you've seen how that process is, and I've still got a couple of brackets to cut off, let's go look at the bracket kit that I bought to actually mount uh, this axle onto the Jeep. Because which bracket kit is going to make a big difference in how you go forward with, with welding it on. And after this video, the next video will be me positioning, figuring out my pinion angle, and we'll talk a little more about that, and then actually welding the brackets on. My cat and my dog are in a standoff. I just wanted to show everyone the potential quality and, and the kind of the expectations on buying a bracket kit for the 8.8. .8. Uh, and these are the brackets I decided to buy. Now these are from Barnes 4x4, or I'm sorry, Barnes 4-Wheel Drive. I bought this kit because A, number one, A, B, whatever, A, um, it is the cheapest kit out there. This, this kit costs $200. And I say this kit, these pieces aren't part of the kit. I'll talk about those in a second. But the kit is $200, and it comes with generally everything you need. It doesn't have the truss like the Artec kit or one of the other kits, but I'm not planning on putting that truss on my 8.8, .8, so that's fine with me. Now, the truss makes them very easy to locate when you're welding everything on, so if you're having an issue with that, you may want to get the truss just for uh, a peace of mind, but I don't think I'll have any problems locating these brackets where they need to go on the axle. But well, let's go through the, the brackets and the kit and see what you get. So first, you get new coil pads. And you can see they're, they're, they're pretty high quality. It's all, what is that, quarter inch steel? 360, yeah, quarter inch. You do have to weld everything, even the retainers and the top of the retainer. This is a completely unwelded kit, although it fits nice. It goes, would go in there perfect. And then, of course, it is all bit and cut to meet the needs of the axle. This is made for the size of an 8.8. .8. This is the track bar mount. And as you can see, it's nice and beefy. I have not ever put, I assume that's two different locations for the track bar. I'd have to go look at mine to see. But there's the track bar mount. Two different locations. I assume you could probably draw a third hole in there and make a third location if you wanted it. This would be the shock mounts. You can see, that would just mount up under or however you'd want it. Realistically, you could run non-lift shocks if you mounted this up a little bit and got it out of the way. But you have to be careful of the gas tank. Same with this. Uh, let's see, what is this? This will be the upper control arm mount. You can see they are offset. 
because they are all set. The lower control arm mounts, which are very beefy, which is good. Now they're not boxed. That is one thing that might be a little different than some kits. They're not boxed. Well, actually they are boxed. I'm an idiot. They are. They go on like this. Or wait, they go on like, like so. They're not boxed on the bottom side, but they don't have to be. That's, that's so much stronger than what a stock Dana 35 or Dana 44 mount would be that as long as it's welded properly, it's fine. And then of course your sway bar mounts. And they sent me these six nuts. I have no idea. I'm sorry, five nuts. One, one, six nuts. They sent me these six nuts. I don't know why. Not sure what they go to. I'll have to read back through the kit and see why I got six nuts here. Um, either way, got six nuts. All right, so that's the kit, guys. If you if you're looking for a good, solid, cheap kit, this was two hundred dollars. Uh, it's very well made. It is going to work perfectly, I assume, if I get it well done perfectly. If it doesn't work, it's probably because of the user error, not because of the kit. But check them out. Uh, that's Barnes Four Wheel Drive Four WD. Uh, I have bought a lot of stuff from them, and they've always got me my parts really quick. These came in three days. I believe they're located in Kentucky. I'm in Georgia. Not that far away, but still three days. Actually, they're in North Carolina. They're in Edward, North Carolina. So <coughs> they're not very far away, but that's still pretty damn quick. So I also ordered, because some of you may have seen the Grand Cherokee uh, project I'm, I'm working on. These are the lower control arm mounts that I bought for it. And you can see those three dots there. These are so much beefier than stock. These were... Now, these weren't as cheap. These were still 48 bucks, which uh, was okay, but I was hoping to find something a little bit cheaper, especially considering this, this it comes not welded, and by not welded, what I mean are these cam locators aren't welded on. I would like for them to be welded on. You can see they're located by those dots, so I'll be able to weld them on just fine, but you would line them up, and I'd weld them on. A little weld here, a little weld here, a little weld over here. And then that uh, allows the cam bolt to change the camber properly like they're supposed to. So you have to weld one on each side. But uh, if you have any questions about this kit, then uh, shoot me a message, and I'll be glad to answer any questions. This isn't the first time I bought from Barnes 4-Wheel Drive, but it is the first time that I've tried to use one of these kits. So we'll see how they work. What do you think, Bella? That's what I thought. Jose! Hey, buddy. So, uh, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate uh, the views. Uh, if you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up. If it was informative and you want to see more, please subscribe. Uh, and let me know what you think.